Well, we've managed to secure Nick Courtney for an interview, but we have to talk to him very quickly, and I don't mean as in talk very quickly, but you know what I mean, because they have to shoot off and do a panel in a minute. Huh? So, go straight into it, Nick. Hello, Nick. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Also, welcome to this convention. Mm. Chance to meet old friends again. Yes, Lawrence Payne particularly. Uh, I met him last on a beach in the south of France in 1965. In fact, we were on a pedalo, actually. We, you know those pedalos in the Mediterranean. We were on a television program called Riviera Police. It's a very long time ago. And he and I were in the same story. And we were both working in Nice, nice location, very sunny. And we were talking about all sorts of things in the world. That's the last time I saw Lawrence Payne, 1965, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Input to Doctor Who was wartime. Wartime, yes, John Levine's. Uh, uh, video, that's right, which has been made, yes. But that's featuring and starring John Levine. It's not much to do with me at all. Small piece well, I just, um, you hear me on the crackly and the walkie talkie, yeah. and I'm telling him to behave himself, as I usually always tell Benton to behave himself. Uh, well, I'm not saying that really, but um, you know, he's asking. I've got about three lines. I'm nothing to do really with that at all. I went round to producer's flat, I think, and recorded that. Those three lines. It's Keith Barfather. Uh, mm. mm -hmm. And also, there's been talk that Keith is actually going to extend, now that he's be began with adventures, mm. into one con containing the brig and the unit team. Yes, that's his idea. And uh, of course, don't forget, in the meantime, Keith has done all those myth makers. Do you know about those? Because yes. um, he did one on me about three, four years ago, uh -huh. um, which was which was nice. He did a very good one on Ian Marta, my very close friend, Ian Marta, which is an awfully good one. And yes, he is hoping to do a project called Return to Devil's End. And originally he had a script idea for it, but it, I think they had copyright problems or something, so that didn't happen. I still got the script. But uh, that is, uh, the format's changed now. Uh, if he can get John Pertwee, myself, Richard Franklin, and John Levine together, I think we'll go as actors, probably, probably not in our characters. Otherwise, maybe, maybe in copyright problems with either authors or BBC, I don't know, I'm not sure. Are there any ch chances of seeing perhaps the brig in his own adventure? In, in which one? In, in, in the Mythmakers, like John. Well, I've done one. I've done the Mythmakers. But in an adventure similar to that of John? Oh, well, there are no plans. I mean, I don't know. Mm, it's up to Keith, if he approaches me with the idea. Keith is one of the more professional, the most professional fans yes, uh, to yes. approach Doctor Who at all. Mm. But what do you think about fans in general? I mean, have, have attitudes changed recently with the, um, with, you know, the coming of Sylvester McCoy, that kind of thing? Do people tend rather to look more fondly, do you find, back to your time and sort of slag off the recent? Well, <clears throat> yes, I suppose that does happen. Not necessarily be there conventions and fans in America or in Britain. I think people have very fond memories of the unit days, and that's lovely to hear that, because uh, we enjoyed those days very much. I don't think they, I don't find, I mean, some are very clear that they don't like certain aspects of Doc 2 as it is today, uh, but they're entitled to their opinion. I mean, maybe they don't like who's playing the Doc, who's playing the companion, or who's playing what, but that's up to the fans to have their views. It's not really for me to comment, because um, I can't, unless I've seen, you see, I haven't seen a lot of the new stories. I've been either in the theatre or elsewhere, so I didn't see any of Colin Baker's hardly, and I've seen very few of Sylvester's. So I can't make a comment. I think, you know, fans have their own preferences, be their doctors, be their companions, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Everyone can have their um, favourites. And on the whole, I'm rather lucky because a lot of people like the unit era, and we were popular, which is nice. You seem to be becoming more and more involved in conventions today. At DoctorCon, for example, you were walking around parading with the uh, auction items. Yes. Both in John Levine. <laughs> yes, that's right. <coughs> John actually said in an earlier interview with us that he would like to see the unit team, and we put it to him that the unit team weren't specifically Doctor Who, back in action as perhaps a miniseries. Would you think this The spin-off, you mean? Yes. Oh, well, that'd be a very good idea. I always thought there ought to be a spin-off and it should be called Briggs Army. Because, I mean, it's the funniest army you've ever seen with a brigadier and a captain and a sergeant, and that's it. 
or warrant officer, as he later became. I always thought about that fondly, I mean, years and years and years ago, but it never happened. And after all, I'm just an actor playing an army officer. Uh, as you know, when I was in the army for real, I was only a private. But I had a chance to observe the officers. My father was a professional officer, so I suppose I must have had a chance to observe them. But I never particularly pursued it. But I am writing a book at the moment. It's called Whatever Happened to the Brigadier. Can you tell us a little bit more about Yes, I can. I hope I finish it before Panopticon next month. Panopticon 9? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, September the 15th and yes. 16th this year, at Panopticon 9, yes. And so when, when, what about publication? Oh, no, I haven't written it yet. I've got the plot. But I'm, every time I start to write, something delays me and gets in the way. You'll find that's the excuse of all writers, I suspect, except Lawrence, who's, Lawrence Payne, who's um, <coughs> had things published. Don't forget, I've had nothing published yet. I've got some interest uh, from a publisher, some, but I haven't written it yet. It's up to me to write it. But it's, I'll tell you a bit about it. You remember the end of the Five Doctors, the Brigadier's call back to school, because Pat Trouton says, back to school, Brigadier. Well, now he's summoned out to Geneva, where, of course, you remember, the Brigadier took his orders from Geneva, United Nations, and he's summoned to Geneva. He's brought back for an, an enormous security conference, and it involves the Middle East. It involves Iraq, Iran, Israel, Egypt, Jordan. So you've got the scenario. And you may not know I grew up in the Middle East, so I know quite a lot about it. So it's the Brigadier being called back to Geneva. You see, it makes sense, because that's where he took his orders from. And he has to have, you know, get the security together for all these nations I've just mentioned who are in all sorts of trouble. Um, so I was just nodding to a friend, <laughs> it's all right. Um, <clears throat> and he has to organize this, and all I can tell you, there's an attempt to assassinate the Brigadier, which fails, but someone else is killed. And I can't tell you more than that, otherwise you'll never buy the book. And anyway, I haven't written it yet, but I've got the plot. Did you read? Harry Sullivan's Yes, because my great friend Ian Martyr, he, he was the guy, incidentally, Ian, who encouraged me to write, because he was a very close friend. So will it be in the same style as type of boys? Well, no, because I suppose I'll be the, no, because I'll be, I'm bound to be a different writer. Um, and Ian, after all, was in print, Ian Martyr. I haven't been in print yet. I suspect my style will be different from Ian's. He wouldn't want it to be the same. But it will be, if you can imagine the title, Whatever Happened to the Brigadier. Will it be written from the point of view of the Brigadier? Oh, yes. From the Brigadier all the time? Uh, yes, it, it'll be in the third person. Book. I'm sorry? It's in the Briggs thinking throughout the book. Yes, yes. Mm. So it should go down well with fans, certainly. Might, hope so. America. I'll let you know if it ever sells, and if I... <laughs> and then, um, <clears throat> may never sell, may never even be published, and I shall have to win the pools or something and publish it myself. You can plug it on this anyway. <laughs> OK. Um, yes. What do you plan for the future then, Nick? Uh, any returns to Doctor Who? Um, not at the moment, but um, from today, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm starting a six-month contract with the BBC. I'm going back on radio. I did a lot of radio about eight years ago uh, on the radio drama company, and I'm going to do a six months with them. So that's my plans for the moment, which will give me some time to finish off the book if I don't get it finished by Panopticon, which I suspect I may not <laughs> by 15th of September. I'll try. Nick Gordon, thanks very much. Okay, thank you.